Okay, in this video, we're going to use NS Notification Center to capture post notifications that are sent out from our keyboard when the user opens or closes it. We'll use these messages to offset our view so that we can accommodate for our keyboard. I'm going to create a new Xcode project. I'm going to create a single view application, and I'm going to name it NS Notification Center. Click Next and Create. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is go to our storyboard. I'm going to change the size to 4.7 inch on my view controller, and I'm going to drag out a container view. So this container view is going to take up most of the window, but I'm going to leave a little bit of space here for my text input and my button. When we created our container view, it automatically made this view controller. We don't need it. What we do need is a table view controller. Okay, so let's size this to 4.7 inch, and we're going to go ahead and embed it by control dragging from our container to our table view and selecting embed. So now what will happen is in our container view, this will be rendered. Let's pull out a text field, add that to our view, and a button, which I will rename send. Okay, we're also going to add some constraints by selecting Add Missing Constraints. We'll give this a run so we can see what it does right now. We see our view is expected, and in our text field here, if we click, our keyboard covers it. And that's what we're going to manage today. We're going to send messages from our keyboard to our view controller, and that's going to move our view up for us so that we can still see our text message. So the first thing we need to do is hide our keyboard when a user taps away from the keyboard. We can do this with a text field delegate and just hide the keyboard that way, or we can use a gesture recognizer. I'm going to use a gesture recognizer here. Okay, so the code that I've added in here is just a UI tap gesture recognizer, and it's going to target the view. It's going to run this action when the view gets tapped. So now we just need to add this action. So now this dismiss keyboard, when it gets run, it's just going to hide the keyboard for us. Now, we're going to add two observers, and these observers are going to listen to the UI keyboard, and they're going to listen for when the keyboard opens and when it closes. Okay, so I just pasted in two observers. We are targeting self, and we have a selector, which is going to be our function named keyboard will show, and a second one with keyboard will hide. Now, we also have a name here of UI keyboard will show notification. What this means is that there is already posts being sent from our keyboard, and we are capturing them with these two observers. So when these posts come out, what we're going to do is we're going to fire these functions. And we are also going to pass into these functions, each time we fire them, the size of our keyboard. Okay, so now I'm going to paste these two functions in here, and I'll break those down. So I've pasted in keyboard will show and keyboard will hide, which matches our selectors up here, keyboard will show and hide. And we've passed in our frame, and we're able to capture our keyboard size and an offset size for when the user collapses that little pre predictive text window. So if the predictive text window is left open, we're just going to offset our view by the keyboard's height. But if the user collapses or opens up, the predictive text window, it's going to hit this else block and it's going to add the offset into the equation here. And then when the keyboard hides, all it does is undoes the keyboard size dot height. So we're going to run this. And what you should see is when you click inside your text field, it moves up right along with the keyboard. When you open your predictive text, it moves with that, collapses with the predictive text, and moves back down.